Correlation coefficients. R is product moment correlation coefficient. Okay, so that's the letter we use for it. And what this does is it tests how close data is to a straight line. So we are talking only about linear correlation here. Very important statement that we use quite a lot. Correlation does not imply causation. So what this means is just because there's a correlation, it does not necessarily mean that one causes the other. We can't say that. And it doesn't actually mean that there even is a link just because there's a correlation. There might be, but it doesn't mean there will. There definitely will be. So scatter graphs. Here you've got a scatter graph. And if you were going to use your scatter graph in a line of best fit to make a prediction, then if your value that you're making a prediction for lies well within the known values or the known range of values, your prediction will be more reliable than if it doesn't. So here I've extended the line of best fit and I've made my prediction outside that range. Now we would call that extrapolation. So my value is less reliable. Okay, hypothesis tests for correlation coefficients. So we have quite lots of different letters with three to be precise. We have R, which is our correlation coefficient. We have rho, which we use for the null and the alternative hypothesis. That's a Greek letter. It's like a slanty P. And then we have the P value. Now, this is easily confused with rho because they look so similar, but the P value is actually a probability. And if you're dealing with a P value, you would just compare it directly to the significance level. The null hypothesis is always rho equals zero. That's no correlation. Your alternative could be rho is positive or rho is negative or rho is not equal to zero. So no correlation whatsoever. You won't be asked to calculate R. If you are dealing with correlate, if you're doing a hypothesis test where it's given you the correlation, coefficient, you will compare the modulus of your correlation coefficient to the value in the table that you'll read off. If your modulus is greater than the value from the table, you reject the null hypothesis. However, if you're doing a question using the p-value, you compare your p-value to a significance level. And if your p-value is tiny or less than the significance level, you're going to reject the null. Right, question one. Question one um, you've got a correlation coefficient of waiting times and uh, the outside temperature in a sample of 10 students is 0.72. You're going to test at the 5% level to see if this data is positively correlated. So your hypotheses, your null hypothesis is rho equals zero, so no correlation. Your alternative is rho is greater than zero, so positive correlation. So you've got a one tail test. So what you would do here is you would go to the table that the question has given you and you would read off the value. So it's a one tail test at 5%. So you go to the table and you're looking at one tail test at 5% and you've got N is 10. So your table value is 0 0.5494. The modulus of your correlation coefficient is greater than 0 0.5494, so you are going to reject the null. Your conclusion, there is sufficient evidence at the 5% level that there is a positive correlation between waiting times and temperature outside. Question two, the amount spent on education is negatively correlated, okay? It's, well, it's expected, sorry, to be negatively correlated. Data is, connect, is collected from 50 countries, the sample correlation coefficient from these 50 countries is minus 0.36. We're going to test to see whether this is negatively correlated like it's expected to be at the 5% level. So your null row is equal to zero, no correlation. Your alternative, we're looking for negative correlation, so row is less than zero. So you are going to go to your table of values. It's a one tail test. So a one tail test at the 5% level. So you're here and your value of N is 50. So it's going to be 0 0.2353. 
the modulus of your correlation coefficient is greater than your table value. So again, you will reject the null hypothesis. There is sufficient evidence at the 5% level to say that education spending is negatively correlated. Question three, 20 students are asked how long they spend in front of the TV, how many hours they spend, and this is then compared to their reading level. The correlation coefficient found is minus 0.31. We're going to test for correlation, any correlation at the 10% significance level. So your null hypothesis, rho equals zero, no correlation. Your alternative hypothesis, rho is not equal to zero. That's any correlation. So this is two-tailed. So all you're going to do here, it just changes where you read on the table. You are going to go to, so we're looking at 10%, two-tailed and 20 students. So in the, you're going to go two-tailed, 10% and N is 20. It's 0.3783. The modulus of minus 0.31 is less than 0.3783, so you do not reject the null hypothesis. There is not significant evidence of a correlation between TV watching and reading levels. And the last thing, which is a little bit odd, your p-value. Now, this is just a probability, and you won't be given a table to read things off if they're talking about a p-value. I've taken two questions from the textbook. So the first one, Information from 20 students to investigate the hypothesis that there is a correlation between IQ level and a maths test result. So first of all, null and alternative hypothesis. That's straightforward. That's probably two marks. Your null is no correlation. Rho is zero. And your alternative is some correlation. Rho is not equal to zero. Data is collected and the p-value for the correlation coefficient is 0 0.00218. What's the conclusion of testing this at the 5% significance level? Well, just as if you were doing a binomial or a normal and it was two-tailed, you halve your level of significance, so that becomes 2.5%. And you don't need to take the modulus. It's a probability. It can't be negative. So you can see that I've accidentally taken the modulus and scribbled them out. I can see that my probability is tiny and less than 2.5%. So just as with the normal and the binomial with the probabilities, that's highly unlikely. And at this level, I will reject the null hypothesis. So we would say that there's sufficient evidence to say that there is some correlation between IQ level and maths test result. And last question. So again, this is taken from the textbook. The average speed of cars is measured at six different checkpoints, varying distances from the junction. Um, there's a belief in general that the cars get faster as they are further from the junction, right down the null and alternative hypothesis. So that's like greater the speed, greater the distance from the junction. That's positive correlation. So you had to think a little bit about that there. Your null is rho equals zero. Your alternative is rho is greater than zero. So you've got a probability. Your probability is 0.084, so that's about 8.4%. You're going to test this. It's a one-tail test at the 5% level. That is greater than 5%. It's a probability. It's more likely than 5%, so you do not reject the null. So there is not sufficient evidence or not significant evidence between to say that there is a that speed and distance from the junction are positively correlated.